Well, a massive shakeup on Parliament Hill. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has overhauled his cabinet with about three quarters of portfolios now changing hands. City News National reporter Xiao Li Li is joining us live now with a breakdown of some of the bigger changes. Xiao, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, we'll start off with some of the rookies. We knew some of the uh, veterans and some of the ministers who are on their way out as of a couple of days ago, but we didn't know what the new faces were going to be when they came into cabinet. We'll start with uh, Arif Rani, who now has a very big portfolio as a rookie minister. Yeah, Eric Ferrani, he is the MP for Parkdale High Park, and he's actually not unfamiliar with the file. He was previously parliamentary secretary to David Lametti, who was uh, the who is the outgoing attorney general and justice minister. Lametti, of course, now out of parliament entirely. ferrani has got a very deep background in the law. He, he was previously uh, an analyst with the Canadian Human Rights Commission in Ottawa, and he was also an assistant trial attorney when uh, the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal was prosecuting the genocide in Rwanda. So he's deeply experienced in the practice of the law. So it's not as if he's going to be going into it cold. But of course, this is, this is a big file for a rookie minister to take on. And of course, everyone's still a little uncertain about precisely why David Lametti is no longer in the cabinet. Uh, usually you get some sort of sense that somebody has bungled a file or is perhaps answering questions not perhaps to the prime minister's satisfaction a bit too often, but nobody really got that sort of sense from Lametti. And of course, the prime minister yesterday, he was asked about why he dropped some of his longtime ministers, and he just said it was time for fresh energy, fresh faces in cabinet. So that's all we really have to go on at this point. Right. There was more of a direct reason, and I think at least it can be assumed, why Marco Mancino was taken out of the uh, public safety portfolio. Tell us a, a little bit about uh, Don LeBlanc, who's now taking over. Well, Dominic LeBlanc is really seen as sort of a, a problem solver. He's a real fixer for this government. I mean, there are a lot of chairs to fill in this cabinet. We've got a pretty big cabinet size of hand in hand. Dom LeBlanc is being asked to take on, he's, he's keeping intergovernmental affairs. This is the uh, position. He's essentially the government's liaison to provincial and uh, municipal and territorial governments. And it's a, it's a big responsibility. And it's also, it's a relationship job. You know, you got to know people and they're keeping them there probably out of sense that, you know, he's been here for a while. He's managed it quite all right. And why upset the apple cart? But they were also getting the sense that he can clearly handle this job maybe a bit more. So they've given him public safety as well as democratic institutions. Public safety, of course, has been a bit of a problem ministry for the federal liberals uh, this year. We, I mean, Toronto residents will know precisely why everyone was so upset about the transfer of Paul Bernardo to a medium security prison. And of course, the foreign interference file, Marco Mendicino was rightly or wrongly seen as not doing enough on that file. So it's clear that the I mean, the prime minister felt at the very least it was time for him to take a step. It was time for Marco Mendicino to take a step away from cabinet, maybe give a reset and put a, a fresh face, a capable hand on that file. And there were changes as well when it comes to the defense file. And this seemed to be more of a surprise. Anita Anand, uh, no longer the defense minister and another Toronto uh, name has moved in, uh, the former chief of police. Yeah, Bill Blair is taking defense. Uh, he moves from emergency preparedness and he takes the national defense file. This one is also a bit strange because Anand was not necessarily seen as, how do I phrase this? Nobody could say she had any problems with the file. She's had no major faults in her time, not 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 like the previous minister, uh, holder, holder of that, that portfolio. And she was, of course, tasked with, you know, changing the culture at the Canadian Armed Forces. She did, I mean, there were questions yesterday immediately after she was sworn if she had any regrets or concerns about the idea of leaving the work undone, but she seemed to have great confidence in the idea that she could keep it going and great confidence in Bill Blair to continue that work. Blair, after getting sworn in, of course, he had he had a, a few remarks on hoping that he'll be able to bring a fresh perspective to it and hoping that he'll be able to apply some of his knowledge from his time as, you know, within Toronto Police to it. Toronto Police, obviously not a military organization, but he, you know, paralleled it as they're both uniformed organizations. We'll see how much he has to do there, because to be blunt, 
defense is one of those files where uh, you can lean on other ministers for help because things like Ukraine, for example, you, you, you're you you're working with foreign affairs, you're working with the deputy prime minister. This is not something that you're taking on all yourself. So it's a, it's a bit of a wait and see issue uh, with Blair right now because he handled emergency preparedness, I mean, quite well, reasonably well. Yeah, especially uh, concerning uh, some of what we've seen lately with the wildfires, uh, a lot of updates there. Uh, so we will just have to wait and see how this all unfolds. Once again, Xiaoli Li joining us live from Ottawa. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for having me, as always. No problem.